empty. We pray that you will illuminate our path in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that your word would correct us, Amen. that your word will rebuke us, Amen. that your word will heal us, Amen. that your word will deliver us, Amen. that your word will set us on the path of righteousness Amen. for your name's sake. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. My deep and sincere apologies that I came late, but I believe that God ordained it like that. Hallelujah. Amen. I am your pastor's brother and friend that most people have not met. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm very, very thrilled and excited that I could make it here this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I've heard this dead for some time. And I'm grateful to God that he has given me the grace and the privilege to pay it today. Hallelujah. Amen. It almost did not happen, but God wanted it to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And so today we're getting, um, I believe, uh, two for the price of one. <laughs> I believe, Pastor, you already preached. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read from the book of Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Um, I've seen a few familiar faces. Uh, good to see you after many years. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, warm greetings from Lagos, Nigeria. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where the Lord resides. Amen. <laughs> the Lord resides in Lagos, Nigeria. He also resides in Abuja. The other day I was flying to Abuja from um, Heathrow Terminal 1, and the woman at the desk asked me if I had been to Africa in the last three to four weeks. I said, yes, I was in Abuja about two weeks ago. Then she asked me, where is Abuja? I said, excuse me, Abuja is the capital of Nigeria where God resides. <laughs> so we laughed over it. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm very, very honored to be here today. Amen. Amen. Pastor, thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to share fellowship with the brethren. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this is really significant for me. I can't explain it. I don't have the time to explain it. Hallelujah. Amen. But it is very, very significant that I could make it here and stand before you to share the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, they will hear about it at home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, have you found it? Acts chapter 12, from, I'm reading from verse 1 to 12. Now, about that time, I'm reading from King James' version of the Bible. About that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the judge unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Get thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. 
And they went out and passed on through one street and fought with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know for a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Aaron and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered praying. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mommy Buno. Hallelujah. Amen. Where's your guy? Expect to see him on the drums. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God uh, for his mercies of our lives. Amen. Amen. Uh, I think we're really, really privileged if uh, and when we're in church and we have members of our family. And as time goes by, we have our children join us in the work of the ministry. There's nothing more fulfilling. Hallelujah. And so um, I wish I had a whole day uh, to take the people of God down the memory lane. But it must mean that God means to give me another opportunity sometime in the future. Hallelujah. Amen. So I can tell the stories. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just read in the scriptures uh, about a dramatic and a miraculous uh, deliverance that Peter experienced. Uh, Peter... Uh, the man of God uh, was held captive, as we read, uh, but God delivered him. And to understand what really happened, you may need to go back to chapter 11 of the book of Acts. In chapter 11 of the book of Acts, we see the church um, in different situations. Uh, the church was prosperous. Uh, God was adding to the church. God was saving Gentiles by the hand of the apostles. God was um, uh, manifesting his power in diverse ways. Uh, in the time of Jesus Christ, they were baptized in water. Um, in the time of the apostles, they received baptism by the Holy Spirit. Strange things were happening. In fact, in the time of the apostles, it got to a time that a man that persecuted the church um, immensely, a man by the name of Saul, came to Christ. He came to church. He came to the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God was doing miraculous and wonderful things in the lives of his children. And so time came that the, 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 the gospel began to spread and the church came into a time of persecution. And so because the church was expanding in leaps and in bounds, because souls were coming uh, to, this, to, to, to salvation, they were coming to Christ. Uh, the people that were against the faith uh, that we now know of, began to persecute the church. Uh, the church was persecuted. Uh, it was also a time that the church, because of the prosperity, people gave uh, from their heart, they gave of their limited resources, and wonderful things happened. And it got to the time that because the church was expanding, because God was blessing the church, was blessing his people, he was prospering them, uh, there was some kind of envy. Uh, the king at that time, the uh, Bible says, uh, went after the leadership of the church and he took one of them um, and killed that uh, leader and because nobody really uh, protested um, he thought it was acceptable so Bible says he thought it would vex it would uh, it would vex the church further and so he arrested he had a leader of the church at that time or one of the senior leaders he, he arrested him and put him in prison that's when we then got to chapter 12. So you will see that the first line of chapter 12 was something like, and after these things, or something like that. If you go back there, please, um, chapter 12. Now about that time, now about that time. So it, it, it was referring to something that happened before. I don't have time, Pastor. Uh, so so I, I'm just going to fast forward very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have time to explain what happened, uh, but I've summarized it. So they took Peter. They took Peter. And the plan was that Peter uh, will be killed after Easter. And he was imprisoned. Peter was put in prison so that he will be killed after Easter. But God had another plan. 
Hallelujah. Amen. It's not impossible that there are people here gathered this morning that you are in kind of a prison. You know there are different kinds of prison. Sometimes people can be in prison in their heart. They can be in physical prison. They can be in prison in their emotions. They can be in prison in their finances. They can be in prison in their health. But no matter the kind of prison that you may be in, Today, liberty has come Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so Peter was put in prison. He was going to be killed. But God had a different plan. And God rescued Peter. That was the story that we just read. And so, people of God, my, my, my God sent me here this morning to encourage somebody. And to tell you that he is coming to get you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The miraculous deliverance that Peter experienced. There were steps to that deliverance. And that's what I want to share with you. I would like to share the steps to the, the, the miraculous deliverance. And then I would like to advise the church one or two advices. And I would like to pray. And then I'm done. And the debt is paid. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. People that understand it, they got it. Amen. Amen. This is a debt that was hanging on my neck for many years. In fact, I almost paid it three weeks ago. I came to town with my family and I told them, ladies, we're going to Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, but we were planning like we planned in Nigeria. We didn't realize that we were supposed to have booked the tickets many weeks ahead. So when we went online, oh my God. Hallelujah. Amen. But here am I today. See, isn't God wonderful? Yes. God is wonderful. Now, what were the steps to the miraculous deliverance that Peter experienced? If you go very, very quickly to verse 5, Bible says that Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hand. I don't understand how Peter could sleep in this situation. I don't understand. Either he was very tired, exhausted, or he simply just had faith in God that he that had promised would deliver. I suppose I would understand it when we get to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Bible says that Peter was imprisoned and an angel of the Lord went to visit him. God sent him deliverance. An angel of the Lord went to wake him up. An angel of the Lord represents an unusual help from above. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. An angel of the Lord represents an unexpected help from above. Represents when you are in dire straits. When men thought it was over for you. When they thought the end had come. But somehow, somewhere, an angel of the Lord showed up for Peter. Perhaps you are in a similar situation. You have been through the storms. You have been through the tide. You have been through ups and downs. You have seen challenges. You have seen persecution. You have seen difficult times, trying times. My prayer is that God is going to send you help. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God sent Peter help. When he himself, arguably, may not have been expecting it. At a time that the church gathered to pray, to say, God, rescue our brother. God sent help to Peter. We read it in verse 7. It's not different from the experience that Jacob had in Genesis chapter 28 verse 12. Bible says angels descended and ascended. It was a very difficult time for Jacob. It was a painful period. It was a period that he thought all was lost. But though man thought all was lost, God did not abandon him. God will not abandon you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Genesis chapter 19, Lot had a similar experience. 
where God delivered him by angels. God was going to destroy his town. But God singled out the family of Lot and God rescued them by an angel. There may be things that you are going through, things that you are experiencing. My prayer today is that God will send you help from above. Amen. God will send you help from around. Amen. God will send you help that you did not expect Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I had a similar experience a few years ago around this neighborhood in the U.S. Pastor and Pastor Mrs. know the story. Uh, my wife was pregnant with our second child and you know things developed about a fifth or six months and so she had to get on the plane to come to the u.s to have the baby because we had lost a baby before previously and so you know my wife got on the plane and came to the u.s someplace called rhode island uh, hallelujah and she, and she actually made it and she made it we didn't think she would make it and then from the hospital from the airport, I'm told, uh, she went straight to the hospital. I wasn't even available to perform, you know, oh my God, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> to follow her, hallelujah. Somebody volunteered, her sister volunteered and followed her. And one story after the other, she had the baby by cesarean section at how many months? About six months. So the baby was in the incubator for some months, you know, she was like this. She was not up to this microphone. <laughs> Medical people would understand it. Hallelujah. Amen. But God helped her. Hallelujah. Amen. God helped me and saw her through. The baby today is a 13 year old. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> uh, evidence of God's goodness. Amen. So the baby, so by the time they discharged my wife, here was a um, miraculous um, rescue. When they landed at the bill, <laughs> she felt dizzy. It was a dizzy song. Hallelujah. Amen. And we said we will pay so that we can come to the U.S. anytime. You know, we wouldn't have to hide. But by the time they landed at the bill, they even told her that this kind of bill, only insurance can pay it all. So what are we going to do? When she phoned me on the phone, I said, okay, at last. On my way to America, I can go and walk, and then I will pay it <laughs> over 10 years or something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, but God showed up. Amen. According to our report, some money, they just showed up in our room, and first they said she should bring my pay sleep. They said, what does your husband do? She said, your uh, husband was a banker in Lagos. By the time they saw my pay sleep and converted it to dollars, it did not amount to much. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They say, you guys, in your country, <laughs> we, were, we were poor, according to them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But some day, some money, one morning, the nurse shows up and said, they chewed the bill. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we paid like three or four thousand. They gave us receipt. Uh, I think it was God that showed up. If I, never, if I never saw an angel before, the woman that came to the room was an angel. You got it. It was an angel. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there could be people here saying, I've never seen an angel before. What does an angel look like? If you're looking for an angel as an angel, you miss the message. We're talking about God sending you help. Hallelujah. We're talking about God sending that our sister that is not feeling well help in the hospital. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're talking about God sending you help on your job. We're talking about God sending you help in your business. Amen. We're talking about God sending you help in your school. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That was what happened to Peter. God sent him help. An angel visited him and rescued him. Not only that, there were other things that happened. If you read verse 7 of the scriptures. Bible says, a light shined in the prison. A light shined in the prison. A light shined in the prison. Remember what a prison is? A prison is an area where you are constrained, where you are restrained, where you are held up, where your freedom is, is scanned. Your freedom is restricted, is inhibited. But on that day, on that day that God wanted to rescue Peter, a light shined on the prison. 
I don't know what kind of prison you may be in. I don't know what kind of restraint, what kind of restriction, what kind of inhibition that you may be in. It may be in your mind, it may be in your business, it may be in your family, it may be in your school. It really doesn't matter. When God shows up and shines a light, there would be deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. A light will shine upon your path to make every dark area of your life receive illumination today Amen. in the mighty name of jesus Amen. if there's a dark part on your on your business god will shine a light Amen. in the mighty name of jesus Amen. if there's a dark part of your health god is going to shine a light Amen. in the mighty name of jesus Amen. a light shined in the prison and bible tells us that jesus christ is that light bible calls him the son of righteousness bible in psalm 84 verse 11 describes him as the sun and shield the light that showed up in prison to rescue Peter, to illuminate the part of Peter, was Jesus Christ. I pray that he will show up in your own part today, in the mighty name of Jesus. More than that, more than that, Bible says also that Peter was raised up. He was between two soldiers. I didn't have the time to tell you that there were 16 soldiers that they sent to guard Peter. In that prison, one man, 16 soldiers. And every night, or that night when he was sleeping, there were two soldiers, one here, one here. Akilo day, what happened? What did he do? What did he do? You two, you may be wondering, is it only me? Am I the only one in Cleveland, Ohio? Am I the only why is everything going sideways this way for me? But it's because you're about to experience a miracle. Yeah. It's because you are going to experience a mighty deliverance yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Peter was raised up, just like in John chapter 11 verse 43, when Lazarus was raised up by the prayer of Jesus Christ. Also in Mark chapter 5 verse 41, the daughter of Jairus was raised by the prayers of Jesus. The same way I believe as I came that God is going to raise somebody up today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not only that, not only that, Peter was liberated, liberated if you're American, liberated if you're Nigerian. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But you got it. Okay, hallelujah, amen. Peter was set free. Bible says that his, the chains fell off. It was, it was such, such a difficult time. He put one chain on his right leg, another on his left leg. But when God showed up, Bible says that the chains fell off. Amen. I pray that everything that binds you and everything that restrains you, that today as a result of the power that is in the word of God, that God will set you free. Amen. Your chain will fall off Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. His chains fell off just because an angel was visiting just because god was visiting remember they were keeping him till after easter they were sure that they had him nailed that he was going to be killed but when god showed up the chains that they put on his feet came off if you have some chains around you it's not physical chains for many of us otherwise we wouldn't be here you get for some of us it's chains in our mind is chains, there are things that are, are holding us to the past, things that happened in our past, in our experience. For some, the chain may be that you, you, you tried things before and you have failed at them and you're about quitting. You're saying, It's not for me, I don't belong, I am not among. But today, God will remove that barrier Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is going to remove that barrier Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not only that, Bible says that when the angel showed up, that for Peter, he was told, rise up, his chains fell off. Bible says that he was told, put on your garment. Hallelujah. Amen. And I wondered, either Peter was putting on the prisoner's garment, at that time, or he was naked. He was naked, he was stripped bare. If you're naked, you're exposed. People are laughing at you. They're looking at your nakedness. God is going to cover you today. Amen. He's going to cover your nakedness today. Amen. Or if you're in the prisoner's garment, you're in a garment that people are saying proverbs about. When you're passing, two people are talking. When you show up, they keep quiet. Have you experienced that before? Oh my God, 
Today your story is going to change. Amen. Your story will change Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Have you, have you experienced it before where two people will be talking? Eh? It was a very active conversation before you showed up. And then when you showed up, then they, they tried to change the topic. Oh, I thought it was only me. I, I, you have experienced it before. Have you? Oh. But that will change. Amen. The proverb that they've told about you will change. Amen. Your story will become a good story. Amen. Your story is going to become a great story. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, put on your garment. Every garment of dishonor and shame is going to be removed from you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not only that. Not only that. After all this, Peter was actually released. Peter was released. The one that they were preserving till the day for the slaughter, until after the holiday, until after the Easter celebration, he was actually released. In Psalm chapter 124, verse 7, the Bible says, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, Amen. and we have escaped. Amen. I don't know where you are caged, where you are restrained. I don't know what kind of prison you have. This word is for you. Amen. You are escaped. Amen. Say to yourself, I am escaped. I am escaped. I am escaped. I am escaped. The snare is broken. Snare is I am broken. escaped. I am In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Peter was released. Against all odds, Peter was released. Peter got his freedom. And not only that, not only that, after Peter was released, Bible says that the gate opened for Peter. Oh my God. You know, a gate means many things. For some, it's for security. For some, it's a place where they determine destinies. For some, it's a restriction, it's a restraint. For some, it's a full stop. But whatever the gate means to you today, my prayer is that it will open before you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I was glad I think pastor was sharing on gates or he spoke about gates Psalm 24 verse 7 to 9 lift up your heads O ye gates hallelujah Amen. gates will open for you yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus yeah. maybe there was somebody here that has applied to a place you have been rejected a few times when you go out tomorrow you'll be accepted yeah. the aroma of the presence of God will surround you yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus yeah. you that experienced this favor before you will experience favor yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bible says favor is like a shield. It's like a protection. It's like a perfume. That when you put on, when you show up, people just like, you don't know why. You don't know what happened. But well, you don't need to understand. It's because God has visited you. Amen. It's because God is visiting you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not only that. When Peter came out, do you know he came out of three gates? There were three gates. There were three gates. One man. Uh -uh. Mm. One man. The greater, the bigger the devil, the bigger the victory. Mm. In fact, they said one, one gate opened of its own accord. I've never seen it before. The gate opened of its own accord. Isn't that God? Yeah. Yes. The things that God will do in your life, when they hear it, their ears will take you. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not only that, not only that, Peter also shared his testimony. Peter has received a, a, a blessing, a miracle. And the Bible says, he himself, after some time, wondered, ah, ah, it's a dream. It's not a dream. You know, he was debating it. Then he, maybe he saw light. He hadn't seen light for some time. Maybe he saw breeze. So okay, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not a dream. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he went to the brethren. The rest of the story from verse 13 is another sermon which I won't have the time to preach today. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But this, the summary of the rest is that he went to the brethren. Even the brethren that were praying, you know, really were confused. But it was such a big miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, what the Lord is going to do in your life. It may not have been very pleasurable. It may have been challenging or difficult. But what the Lord is going to do in your life. God, the people that hear it, 
they will celebrate with you in the mighty name of Jesus. They will rejoice with you. In Psalm 126 verse 1, when the Lord turned around the captivity of Israel, they were like them that dreamed. It shall be like a dream. Amen. What the Lord will do in your experience. Amen. Let me conclude. Let me try to conclude. You know, Abraham, when God told Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac, told him to go to a mountain, he didn't really give him the full picture. He didn't, he, he didn't tell him everything that would happen. But Abraham obeyed. In fact, when they got to a point, Isaac asked, my father, you said we're going to sacrifice. I can see the wood. Where is the animal? Abraham's response was the response of faith. He said the Lord will provide for himself a sacrifice. Let's, be, let's go, Isaac. And when they got to where they would do the sacrifice, I'm not sure that Abraham still understand, uh, understood. I'm not sure he fully understood what was going to happen. But because of the confession of his mouth, it sounds like God, and it doesn't take God a while. It took me 20 minutes from Columbus here by flying. If I was driving, it would have taken 90 minutes, I was told, by Brother Coyote. But really, it doesn't take God a time. By the time Abraham got there with Isaac, the sacrifice was there. Hallelujah. Amen. So sometimes we wonder how will he do it? You know, it takes so long for this thing to cook, for this thing to boil. It takes time for it to, to soften. It takes, well, when you're figuring it out with your intellect, if it's with God, if it's God doing it, it really doesn't take a time. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the sacrifice was there. Also, Lazarus, when Lazarus died, in fact, before Jesus went there, the way Jesus was talking was, was contradictory, excuse me. It was, it was not like, the, I mean, the, is it, our friend is sleeping. What kind of language is that? Our friend is sleeping, let us go and wake him. Then one of the disciples said, yeah, if he's sleeping, he will do well. He will wake up after some time. Then Jesus said, you don't understand, but let's go. When they got there, one of the sisters said, Lord, if you came on time, he would not have died. You let us down. Jesus said, you don't understand. He's just sleeping. He will wake up. Then the sister said, okay, you wake up in the next word. Jesus said, no, 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 no. The next word is here. Hallelujah. I am the life and the resurrection. I'm here. Even though he's sleeping, he will wake up again. They still didn't believe until Jesus got to the grave. He said, remove the stone. He said, remove the stone. This man died four days ago. By now he's thinking. Jesus said, remove the stone. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Jesus called the name of Lazarus. Ha, commotion. Lazarus actually heard the voice of the master and woke up. I don't know what it is that is dead in your experience. I don't know what it is that you have given up on. I don't know what it is that when you are coming to church this morning, you say, Lord, I'm going so that when pastor asks, they will say I didn't come. I don't know what it is, but today the Lord is giving life to it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lazarus woke up in chapter 11, verse 42. Jesus said something like, Lord, really, thank you because you always hear me. It was a foregone conclusion. But I'm saying it to the hearing of the people that are listening so that they can believe. So it really doesn't take God any time. What we're talking about, it doesn't cost him a lot. Bible says he holds the cattle on a thousand hills, the silver and the gold. If you want, stop trying to figure it out. You will just, you just have a ditch if you're from Ibadan. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Apologies to people from Ibadan. You have a ditch. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Oh God. We also understand that Jesus died for the ungodly while we were yet sinners. Isn't that a wonderful God? He decided that he would die while we were yet sinners. That tells me that all the things that we're running after that we're believing God for, they're within his control like this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They're like this to God. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Perhaps this lesson as I close to is best learned from the four lepers that were by the gate. When people tried to figure out the economy, how the inflation was rising and all that kind of stuff, and they said near the man that, oh, but these things will change. The man said, it cannot change. Even if God will open windows in heaven, it won't change. But did he change? He changed. He changed. Your situation will change. Let me tell your neighbor, your situation will change. It's only temporary. It is only temporary. It is only for now. It is only for now. It's going to change. Amen. It will change. Amen. It will change. It will change. Amen. It will change. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What are the lessons for the church? I said I will speak about the lessons for the church. Two lessons. Please remember, note in verse 5, I believe, the Bible says that prayers were said incessantly ceaselessly, continuously, constantly by the church. The church continued to pray for Peter even when it did not make sense. Because they had killed somebody before you, Peter. If they, if they killed that person before you, Peter, and you are arrested, guarded by 16 soldiers, what chance in heaven do you have, Peter? Forget it. But the Bible says the church prayed ceaselessly. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We believe until we see it. Hallelujah. We believe until it is delivered into our hands. We believe until we possess it. Amen. Amen. The church prayed continuously, constantly. No matter what it is, our beat is to pray. When you don't know how to pray, the Bible says pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you are praying according to the will of God. We are praying that the will of God will be established on earth as it is in heaven. We are asking God to establish his will for our lives as he has done it in heaven. The church prayed. Brethren, no matter the challenge, no matter the trial, we must continue to pray. Advice one. Advice two. Please note that each time Peter was given an instruction, he cooperated fully. Peter cooperated with the angel. How? Fully. fully. Now, if you have read about Peter, that was unusual. Because Peter was very intelligent. More intelligent than many of us. Peter had experience, but on this occasion, he cooperated fully. The things that God will do in your life, he needs your cooperation. Remember, he has made up his mind that he will do it. God has made up his mind that he will do what? He will do it. He made up his mind, Peter, that he will rescue you, even though you may not believe. Maybe you didn't believe. Maybe that's why you fell asleep, Peter. Maybe you are tired. I will ask you when we we'll see later. I really don't know. But the reality is that they said, Peter, get up. He got up. He said, put on your garment. He put on his garment. They said, let's go. He went. It was after he said he thought it was a dream, but he did everything in the dream. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, people of God, we must cooperate with the Spirit of God. If His will, if His kingdom will come in our lives, then we must fully cooperate with how His Spirit direct. Ladies and gentlemen, men and brethren, are you ready to cooperate with the Spirit of God? Because it is already done. If you are looking for title of the message, it's, it's already done. Hallelujah. Amen. It is already done. Hallelujah. Amen. What God will do, what is going to manifest in your life, he did it a long time ago. God, Peter, God wanted to rescue you. He would not allow you to be killed like the other man of God. Amen. My brother, my sister, what you are going through will not overwhelm you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. But remember, Amen. you must cooperate fully when it issues instruction. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you. We give you 